Do I recommend using the MAC, <clears throat> D or the, or the stochastic indicator of, of the volume indicator? Um, I used to fool around with a lot of indicators, guys. I've been trading for 34 years professionally now. Um, and, you know, they can be helpful for some traders. I have dropped most of them throughout my years, and I just focus on the price predominantly. A couple moving averages in the price. All indicators are, are they indicate, but they indicate what? The price itself. So they are derivatives of the price. So the more you focus on an indicator, the more you move your attention from the very thing that the indicator is indicating. All right. So you can, most people go too far with their indicators. They think the indicator is more important than the thing that is being indicated. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's funny. So they, they, oh, the, the, the price doesn't matter. It's my indicator. No, dude, your indicator is supposed to help you read the price better. Most people don't understand that most indicators are lagging. So you are behind by virtue of looking at the indicator. The indicator is a lagging indicator. All right. If you want to be timely, the focus, the majority of focus should be on the price movement itself. OK. And um, so as I became a better price player, a price watcher, if you will, a price monitor, I found that the the efficacy of, of indicators just became less and less. The importance became less and less for me. Um, I get my signals off the price action and the indicator would be late. And that's what they're, they're supposed to be. Most of them are lagging. Uh, all, almost all of them are lagging, right? Um, a lot of people use, um, for instance, moving average crossover systems, right? So when a sh uh, one moving average crosses above another moving average, that's a buy. But if you think about it, what does the price have to do to cause one moving average to cross another moving average? It has to move really big first to pull the moving average up above the other one. So you're always getting into a move after it's already been strong. The strength is what caused the signal. So now you get in after the strength. So you're always behind the, the price movement when you're using indicators for your entries and exits. All right. So um, most of my traders are selling to indicator watchers. <laughs> They're getting in on the price action itself. When that price action triggers later, triggers many of these technical signals, the rush comes in, the trader sells to those rushing in after the after the move. So so I'm just in other words guys, I'm not a huge fan of them. Um, for some traders, it can help them um, with the oscillators. It can help them stay away from severely overbought positions. So you should not be thinking about buying something and the indicators way up there. You should be thinking about buying it when the indicators down below. If you're at that basic level of trying to deal with that, then yeah, an indicator can help, but you, you that's you must be at a very fundamental level of your understanding in terms of how markets work. If you need an indicator to help you understand that you don't you buy low and sell high, you don't buy high. <laughs> so that's very rudimentary. And if you're there, then maybe an indicator can help you remember that. All right, but aside from that,
they're 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 too late for us to utilize really.